G'day, this is Peter, back with another episode of The Property Club, and today I'm looking at Buana Mano foreclosed homes. This time around, I'm just looking at house and land in Metro Manila and Central Luzon, okay? So mainly Metro Manila and the surrounding areas, uh, but also, you know, Central Luzon. I got some properties from Pampanga, uh, Laguna, and even Subic Bay. So we've got some foreclosures. This time I clicked house and lot here and I've been a lot more organized. So I got a big list. <laughs> Properties all over the Philippines here actually. And this was the list that was 37 pages long. So what I decided to do is arrange it by price. So we're gonna start with the cheapest property which is this one in Pampanga starting at 1.3 million. Okay, so 1.3 million, I've just got the calculator out, divided by 50, that's 26,000 US dollars. Okay, so small little townhouse here in Pampanga in Florida Blanca, and it's only small, a lot area of 86 square meters, and a floor area of 58 square meters, but bloody cheap. 1.3 million peso, it's very, very cheap. I'm sure you can make an offer. Who knows, you might pick this up for 800,000 peso. I know I'd want to buy it very cheaply, so you might get it for under $20,000. So this is the first one. Moving along, we're looking at Rizal province. Have you ever thought you wanted to be in Rizal? Uh, they've got some nice mountains, a uh, bit of a lush area. I quite like that area, personally. Uh, it's 1.9 million peso. Something I need to mention, <clears throat> and doesn't say, oh yes it does. Okay, it has concerns and classification. So this is the biggest thing, especially when buying land in the Philippines, okay? So property classification is a yellow tag. So it has special concerns, either on the title, tax declaration, possession, or other property documents. So there's concerns with the documents. That's a worry. I mean, what kind of concern is it, you know, that they don't have all their documents in order? Are they missing their title deed? Do they only have a tax declaration? They don't have a actual title. Is it untitled? Um, it does have a special concern which says no possession with tenants, former owner or illegal settlers. I'm gonna go ahead and close that one. <laughs> okay, moving along. So look, just before I move to this next one which is in Laguna, look, you have to be careful of the classification. If it's red or yellow, you could have squatters. There, there might be an issue with the title that, you know, it's not fully titled. They've just got a, a tax declaration. They don't have a full title. There are concerns. Moving along, this one for 2.4 million lot area, 100 square meters, not very big, uh, 72 square meters for 2.4 in Laguna, Santa Rosa. Now, if you've been down to Santa Rosa, and I have recently, uh, in the last three or four months, I'll just show you where this is. And I'm just trying to show you where this is. You got Manila. It's just south of Manila. Look, in traffic, to get to work is going to take you like two hours. I'm not going to lie. But I've done it from Ortigas to Santa Rosa when there's no traffic very early in the morning in like 45 minutes. Okay. Um, look, there is a nice highway there, uh, which which is the Eslex, and it's a good location. Santa Rosa is a city. I really, really like this area. I went down there with Ari, and she wanted to move down here. I didn't really want to go down there because I still like Subic. If I was going to move, I'd probably move to somewhere with a beach. And look, yeah, we'll have to see what happens in the future, um, especially you know with what's going on in my relationship. But anyway, <laughs> moving along, this has a green tag. It is in possession with complete property documents. Look, I imagine some of these foreclosures, what happens is, you know, the owners are reluctant to give the documents and they try and stay in the house or something like that. So there can be certain issues. They might have lost the documents. This one looks fine. 2.4 million is pretty good. I think it's decent, but I think you could do better. Definitely need to negotiate on this one, uh, but I like the area. It's a good area. 
Moving along. So another property in Laguna for 2.4 million again. A little bit bigger. It does look fairly similar, doesn't it? it does look similar. Property does look a little bit bigger. Again, green tag. Similar location in Santa Rosa. So Bel Air phase two. I think this was phase three. Yep, so it's the same subdivision, hence why the properties look very similar. Anyway, so very similar, very similar. Next one again, Laguna. Yes, we've got a few in Laguna. I'm very positive on Laguna. It's a nice area. It's a safe area. Um, lots of walkways, you know, in the city there. Nice little river. Um, malls, shopping. It's kind of like a mini Manila, just with without the traffic. And what I like about it is it's a bit closer to Manila than Cavite and Tagatai. So Tagatai recently with the volcano. Bit sketchy, uh, active volcano there. Anyway, this is a regular shaped block, flat terrain it says. It has a frontage of 10 meters, so not bad. A little bit bigger, not much bigger. Again, same development, Bel Air Phase 4. So I'm assuming this is a little bit newer. So we've got a few in this development that are actually foreclosed on. This one, now the photo doesn't give it justice. But this is seriously worth checking out, honestly speaking. Besides one thing, obviously it says it's got a yellow tag with a technical description error. Frontage is 6 meters. So what does that mean? It sounds like there's an error on the document and maybe on the title they've you know incorrectly put something so you know it sounds like on the title maybe it's 10 meters or something like that but for some reason they've written maybe six meters so that could be a concern uh, that's what it sounds like to me but look this is a fantastic area this is in Tagig. if you're not familiar with Tagig, that's bgc just there i'm just trying to zoom in you got bgc there and that's the property in Bay Breeze Executive Village. Okay, so it's not far from the CBD. So if you're working in the call centers, if you'd like, you know, Fort Bonifacio, many people do, it's not far, especially in traffic. It might only take you 15, well, not in traffic when it's <laughs> early hours or night, you know, it might only take you 15, 20 minutes to get there. In traffic, it could take you an hour. I'm not going to lie, it could take a long time. Um, traffic's just insane in Manila, as you, you might already know. <clears throat> Sometimes to go from Tagig to Makati could take an hour. It's that crazy. Uh, it could take half an hour. It just depends on what, what the traffic's like. But look, at 2.8 million, as long as you can solve the classification, it's not a big concern. Uh, it is yellow. It's not green. It's not red. Okay. And it's titled. Then look, it could be a really good buy. Definitely worth checking out. Honestly, this is the only property on the list within a 10 million peso price range that I could find in Tagig. Okay, so that's saying something. And look, nowadays, you know, with condos in Tagig starting from like 250, 300,000 peso square meters per square meter, you know, 100 square meter condo for, you know, 250,000 peso, you're looking at 25 million peso. <laughs> so this has a floor area of 197 let's do the math just on the price without negotiating 2.8 million divided by 197 I mean that's 14,000 peso per square meter that is cheap that's a bloody bargain really next property so this is close to home for me I know exactly where this property is. I can't drive there at the moment due to the lockdown. Okay, can't drive there at the moment. But I will be checking this property out personally. A lot area of 314 square meters. I wish it had some more photos. Some of these old houses from the outside don't look great. But when you get inside, some of them are actually built really well with marble floors, old like Filipino style chandeliers, etc. The concern I do have is I know this area, it's very, very close to Barrio Barreto. It's in Santa Monica subdivision. Literally, you can walk to Barreto. This is only 3 million peso. I wouldn't want to negotiate. I really need to know what it looks like inside. 
The other thing I need to know is, does it flood? Because I know some of the houses in the area, they do flood. So, you know, is the property elevated? You know, have to go through the property very, very carefully. Look for water damage, uh, flood damage, okay? So having a look at this, this is a green tag. Honestly, you don't realize how expensive, you know, property in the Philippines, well, Subic in particular nowadays is becoming. This for three million is just really, really cheap. It says mode of payment, you gotta have cash. They will not accept bank financing. Okay, it's very close to the waterfront, uh, to beaches. Let me just show you. I'm gonna zoom in. Beloit Beach. It's like, honestly, you could walk it in 10, 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes um, to the main road, National Highway there. It's a, it's about a five or six minute walk. It's not far. It really is not. And from there, you just walk down to Beloit Beach. So great little bargain. Definitely want to negotiate. Definitely want to see inside of this property for myself personally. This could be an amazing investment. Okay. Um, I know people personally and they're paying anywhere from like minimum 20, 25,000 peso a month for houses in Barreto and Santa Monica, uh, Alta Vista, again, a little bit more expensive. You're looking at 30,000, 35,000 plus. But this is right next to Alta Vista, so it's a good location. Um, one of the concern is, is definitely safety. Look at that fence. Looks like this barbed wire fence. <laughs> pretty hardcore okay um, Santa Monica does get a bit more crime than you know Alta Vista but I've got friends that live there and you know what a few friends have done if they they've extended the block right out so where the roof line is it goes to the fence so that becomes like a balcony and it's kind of like lockable so people just can't get in so it's like living in a, in a little prison <laughs> honestly if you did that but, you know, I've seen some designs and they look really nice. One gentleman showed me through his house and honestly, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful house. Um, you know, he had that sort of design, but inside marble floors, you know, polished marble floors, really clean inside. He's redone the roof, repainted everything. It looked great. It actually looked really good inside. So that picture, you know, you might think, oh, look, that looks terrible and just pass on it. Don't, don't let it deter you, okay? If it's in the right area, which this is in Subic, in a good area in Subic or Manila, like the Tagig one, have a hard look at it, right? It's definitely worth the uh, blood, sweat and tears uh, to fix it up. Definitely worth it. So next one, 3.2 million. This one I like. It is in Avida settings. Okay, phase one. Okay, it, it's good. It's good. Avida setting is, is a good developer. Uh, we're talking a Yala here, you know, it's a 155 square meter lot for 3.2. Bloody bargain. Concerns. <laughs> Love these concerns, seriously. Property is yellow tag. Ugh. There is no possession. It is regular in shape. There is no possession. What does that mean? It is accessible by both private and public. Okay, so... It sounds like it's a title document. It sounds like they'd lost the title. I mean, you are buying this from the bank. It is a foreclosure. You'd have to speak to the bank how it would work. Probably you buy it, you document it, and it's a long process. Could be years in courts or with the land department to actually process and get your final title. But what people are generally relying on is, you know, the contractor sale to prove that they bought it so technically when you're buying from banks it's a lot safer because you're buying from an individual you can trust you're not buying from an individual that could have a fraudulent document you're not buying from an individual who um, you know at the end of the day could rip you off so look they're going to be honest and you know tag it you know with the correct label obviously this is yellow all right the location is good here guys it is really, really good location. Um, Paranyaki, so close. So you got a Sina city, you got the airport, you got everything there. I mean, awesome location. This is worth checking out. It looks modern. I wonder what what went wrong, and why they had to sell. 
and again it could just be um, you know with the title they're withholding the title and trying to stay in the uh, property and deter people from buying it because yeah it's a good little property there in, in Cavite next one another property in Cavite bigger lot in Greenwood Greenwood Heights okay so the lot area is 290 square meters how cool is that only one picture why are you killing me 3.5 million it is a little bit more expensive and the reason it's more expensive it's in Greenwood Heights Das Marina City and it's a bigger lot the lot is uh, sizable it's a decent lot okay um, actually this is where Aryan's from this area very close by uh, it's a green tag green thumbs up guys I uh, want to note before I go to the next one most of the properties that I've selected here and I spent a good hour or so going through the properties having a good look these are the good ones I'm telling you now these are the good properties that I found you know some of the properties were just oh too expensive or just red tags or just didn't look very good at all and uh, you know location might not not be the greatest so I've really fossicked to find you know the best properties for you guys on this list today so rest assured you're looking at you know the best of the best of what I could find in Metro Manila and Central Luzon just need some water quickly bear with me <coughs> Okay, I am really, really positive on Paranyaki. Look, it's all about location, location, location. With traffic in Manila, look, things are getting better. They've got a subway, metro coming. You know, they're changing things. You know, there is change. Thank you to Dirte. Thank you the president and, you know, the government for that. They're trying to make a lot of change in Manila, you know, to have that traffic flow. But ultimately, you want to be as close to the city as humanly possible. Location, location, location. So this one is in Paranyaki. Let's have a quick look. Let's look at the map. Look at this. You can see. You're next door to the Akata. Akata Casino. <laughs> I'm not going to mention his name, but I've got a friend. <laughs> a good friend when Akata first opened. Um, they gave free drinks really good place to hang out and me and him used to go down there um, not mentioning names but we used to go down there sometimes not often and we'd have a ball city of dreams a Carter you got the Bay Area you've got uh, Mall of Asia there there's so much to do it's a really good area it's on the up and up and up okay property prices units just around this area here you know anything near the casino is 200 to 300 thousand peso per square meter again you're talking like half a million dollars for a hundred square meter property meanwhile you know this is 297 97 square meters not far at all very close to the airport if you love to travel and very close to the casinos malls shopping lots of things to do you don't have to go all the way to Makati or Pasig to have fun everything's there in in per se in Asina city so very very close very very close indeed great location so you can see look the design of the house am I fond of it not really um, you know it's a funny design they've tried to maximize maximize the floor area based on the lot and this happens a lot <laughs> because what happens is you know in the Philippines you have these small lots this is only hundred and twenty square meters and they build like these terrace homes upwards so they try and build you know two three stories maybe even with a rooftop deck and they maximize that space which is cool it is cool um, six bedrooms you know if you like to have lots of kids you know if you like <laughs> you know want to have seven kids this could be the go with three bathrooms you know good little property again have to look inside see the condition check things like plumbing etc but I mean, just the land alone is probably worth what they're asking. Really good buy. Next one, Batangas. So, Batangas, how do I feel about it? Well, honestly, I wanted to show you this, but what I wanted to show you is, look, Tal, Tagatai, you can see there in the map. And in between Tagatai and, 
and Tal, you have a volcano. <laughs> oh my god. The drama we've had with the crisis this year, it's just been crazy. Look, before the COVID-19, everyone seemed to have forgotten. They've forgotten what's happened. And what happened was this, this volcano in Tagatai was activated. And there's ash falling. You've got ash falling like it's the end of the world. People are claiming it's the end of the world between the volcano and COVID-19. It's crazy. It's crazy what's going on in Manila. So this is a really good property. I really like this property. Tal's a great location. It's near Tagatai. It's not too far to Manila if you want to go to Manila. You go south, you've got some great beaches. It looks like a modern home. It looks like quite a nice home, okay? Uh, it's a four beddy, you know, it looks like you could fit two cars there. Uh, got two bathrooms, two story home, cute little home. And it's only 3.9 million. So it's a good price, it's a good price. But, what happens if this volcano blasts off? It is a green tag on the positive side. It's a green tag. You know, it's in possession with complete property documents. It's got the title. Everything's been cited. Everything's cool. But the volcano, you know, it is a risk. Look at what happened with Mount Pinatubu. Uh, people buying properties, you know, in Pampanga, Angeles City. Angeles isn't cheap either. Look, there weren't many Pampanga properties, you know, sub five million on this list not not at all um, but look ultimately what happens if your property gets submerged in ash the ash cloud comes down and it collapses your roof what happens with lava the smoke just breathing in the smoke it's not good it's not healthy so these are concerns you need to think of a lot in the Philippines you need to think of natural disasters you know, with high-rise condominiums, you've got earthquakes. You've got the Ring of Fire. You know, there's condos in Makati and Ortigas that are literally built within one to two kilometers of that Ring of Fire with earthquakes. You know, these tectonic plates and earthquakes, you know, it could happen. Look at what happened in Tokyo with the earthquakes there, big earthquakes, and uh, they're very full-on about construction in, in Japan now because of those earthquakes. Then, you know, similar to Tokyo, you know, Tokyo's got volcanoes very close by to the city. Manila does too. You've got this one in Tagatai, right, to the south. And to the north in Pampanga, you've got Mount Pinatubu. <laughs> so, you know, something to think about. I'm, I'm just saying it's a good little buy. But if you're going to buy something like this, consider the risk factors. And, you know, you might need to get out if there's a volcano and you might lose your house. Or, you know, have serious damage to your house if the volcano erupts okay um, so it was active earlier this year so you want to get a good price what do you want you've got to get this in the twos you got to get it in there look I know people are saying wow oh, Pete two million jeez Pete you know you you're so hard Pete you know you you're such a bastard you know <laughs> you offer mate you're offering way too low look I'm gonna say 2.44 million Honestly, if I made an offer of 2.44 million for this and they took it, I, I would buy this property. I would even consider living in this property. This is a nice property. Okay, I'd seriously like living in here. It is a little bit larger um, than mine because I'm in a duplex villa. I don't have a full lot. I don't even have a car slot. So at the end of the day, look, I think it's a great property and I like that area just because, you know, what's around there. I mean, you've got San Juan, the beaches, um, Babini, the beaches there. You know, everything's really close. And what you also have is Mindoro. So from Batangas, the Batangas port, you drive here, and you can even take your car on the ferry to Sabang Beach in Porto Galera, right? I think it, does it go to Sabang? I think you don't go to Sabang. You go somewhere else, and then you have to drive around. Um, but either way, you can get a little ferry or a bunker boat. I uh, remember one day I missed the ferry. <laughs> Listen to this story. I missed the ferry, and I had to get a bunker boat, and it was dark. It was 6 o'clock when we left. We didn't get there till like, 7.30, and we're on a bunker boat in the dark. Okay, and then we landed in Sabang Beach with my mate, Mark. 
Mark, how you going, buddy? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, that was me reminiscing. <laughs> Next property. Okay, so there is one other property in Taguig, guys. This is a little more expensive. Kind of looks like that traditional Filipino style. It is more expensive. It is four million. Unfortunately, again, okay, again, it's got a yellow tag. So anything with a green tag was like, I'm telling you, ten million plus. So that I found online, ten million plus, eight to ten million plus, I'll say. Okay, this again, you know, issues with the title documents most likely. Again, really good property. It's larger than the other one. It's 226 square meters. To gig, look how close it is to BGC. I've got lots of friends that live in Tagig and they love it. They just love it. And I understand why. I never understood until BGC took off. And a lot of those individuals that bought and built there did really well. Really well. So yeah, no, I like this property. Four million. Uh, you just have to talk to the person again. At the bottom, you're going to have the contact details of the salesperson, either the agent or the contact from the bank who's handling it, handling the mortgagee in possession, uh, handling the foreclosure. Okay, so that's your go to point. Moving along Laguna Santa Rosa. So, again, bigger property than the ones we saw earlier. This one has a green tag. It is in Bel Air Phase 2. Okay, let's go back. So, Rosewood Street, Laguna, Bel Air. So, yeah, it is the same. Oh, did I skip ahead? Just missed it. Okay, so it is, you know, in the same development. It's a little bit pricey. I like the fact that it has a good frontage. It's 13.8 meter frontage. Okay, I like the area. I really like the area. Green tag, green tag close to Binan as well which is a great area problem is the price you got to screw them down you got to screw them down to like high twos like 2.8 2.9 this is a steal nice little house okay definitely worthwhile looks like you could even squeeze two cars in there bit of a tr tight driveway but I think you could squeeze it in you know fix it up fix up the roof looks like just you know needs a little bit of work just a clean maybe a repaint I probably would add a garage, try and extend the driveway out a bit, you know, garage and a shed, and you know, that way you can have two cars under cover, which is really cool. You know, especially if you get this for 2.9, 3 mil, 3 mil is still worth it, 3 mil, but you'd want, you wouldn't want to go much, much over 3 mil, because the floor area is only 112 uh, square meters, it's not a big house, it's only a small house, but it's a bigger lot, 171 square meters. Okay. I like this one, except for the yellow tag. Um, as long as you can get over the issues with the title, this is awesome. Now, look at it. It looks like a modern home. It's a good size, a very good size. Now, let me give you some idea here, guys. It is 253 square meters. It looks very modern. It looks like a nice home. It's on a huge allotment for the Philippines. 373 square meters is big. That's a good size. Okay, that's definitely a good size. Now, the cheapest, I don't know. Look, I'm, I'm a foreigner, so I'm probably getting ripped off a bit. But nowadays, I've found that construction, to ask a builder to build something that's half decent, you need at least 20 to 30,000 peso per square meter. So 100, 100,000, sorry, 100 square meters times 30,000, you know, for something more high end is 3 million. For 100 square meters, you know, that's 20,000 peso per square meter, that's 2 million peso to build. This is 253 square meters. It's below replacement value, is what I'm trying to say. You're getting it probably at cost of build, all right, and you get the land for free. That's the way I see this. Concern is the yellow tag. Talk to the agent, talk to the agent. What is going on here? Is it a risk? What is the risk? Is there a process to get the title? Um, what is that process? Go through it with them to make sure you're safe. If in doubt, 
seek legal advice okay so in San Fernando I like this area San Fernando yes everyone's saying Angeles Angeles but I actually think the the one place that's being overlooked at the moment is San Fernando I prefer San Fernando because it's cheaper than Angeles Angeles City has gone up a lot okay Angeles is not far to drive to if you want to drive now the big thing about it is in Bulacan right I'm just trying to zoom in around about here somewhere you got this new yeah I think it's in Malalolos I think that's how to pronounce it somewhere there okay you have this mega airport this huge super international airport okay now when that happens and you're in San Fernando you drive what 25 30 minutes to Bulacan say 30 minutes 30 minutes without traffic maybe 40 minutes with traffic 45 minutes who knows um, really depends but you're gonna be it at this huge international airport the main airport at the moment is in Manila you have to drive all the way through Manila down to here but that is going to change it's no longer going to be on the south side it's going to be on the north side and it's going to be an airport which is like they're spending billions of dollars now honestly if this thing actually takes off and they do build this airport and they said they're going to break ground I think this year but I don't know if that's happened with COVID-19 but if they do do that the growth on this northern corridor is going to be massive massive who knows this could be a super super city Metro Manila is already huge but it could just extend further out further north to Bulacan and even as far as San Fernando etc I mean they are building Clark out there as well possibly that's their plan uh, the government's plan and look I, I just like the area I really like the area I think it's great look modern home you got some nice malls there for shopping in San Fernando uh, you got Home Depot, you know, stuff like that for DIY jobs and that sort of thing. You know, nice restaurants. Angeles City's not far. You know, you travel south, you can go to Manila. So lots of options, lots of options. This is top on my list for what I found, okay? It's a good price, good price. Um, yes, I think you can negotiate. I doubt they'll negotiate by much. It really just comes down to the concern with the yellow tag. Moving along. Here we go. Big lot, 230 square meter in Avita settings in Cavite. It's a good property here. Is it green? I think it was. Ah, it's yellow. So this is actually for bid. Okay, so you have to bid this property. Okay, it says the personal belongings of the former owner are still inside. There are concerns before you bid, before you do anything, you need to find out what the concerns are of having a yellow tag. Wow, look at that area. So Alabang, Alabang, there's some very expensive houses in Alabang. Ayala Alabang, for example, very, very expensive. Okay, again, this is not far from Paranaki, and it's a good little estate. It is a Vida. We're talking Ayala here, guys. Ayala. I know people, okay, who just will not buy anything that's not Ayala. Yes, I'm serious. It could be Ayala uh, Homes. It could be Avida. It must be an Ayala brand. They just will not buy unless it's Ayala. It's highly sought after, okay? It's a cute little house. Um, it's not actually that little. Let me rephrase that. 230 square meter lot size. Uh, it's a it's a good size lot. It's a good size lot. However, it is a smaller style home, 124 square meters. Be fine for me. Ignore the bedrooms. It says zero bedrooms. That's totally wrong. I think it must be at least three or four bedrooms. I'm guessing three. I'm guessing maybe it's only one bathroom. I don't like that. If it's only one bathroom, yeah, I'd want at least two bathrooms. But look, who knows? You might be able to do something. Look, the, the build quality will be good here too. That's the other thing that you need to consider. You know, construction is important. Like I said, you know, a lot of builders nowadays are asking 20, 25, 30. You know, for a decent build, honestly, right, and 
oh, you can argue with me until you're blue in the face. I'm telling you, nowadays, you need at least 30,000 peso per square meter. Honestly, for a decent build, that's what it costs. Okay, that's what it costs. Look, you can do it cheaper. You can do it cheaper, but you know what's gonna, what's the quality gonna look like? That's what you've got to consider. What's replacement value? So, look, 5.2, definitely getting up there. Make a bid. Make a bid. See how you go. Okay. Alrighty, so we've got another property in Zambales, Subic, Subic Bay. Let's check the map. Okay. Check the map here. Barreto, look, you got Barreto here, guys. Very, very close. Okay, it's a good location. Very good location. Cash only, cash only. They only have this picture. Oh, this picture thing frustrates me to no end. This is a huge house. It's a seven bedroom house. The floor area is 229 square meters with a lot area of 633 square meters. Look, in Australia, in America, that'd probably be a normal lot size, okay? In the Philippines, that's a huge, humongous mansion size lot. Honestly, it is big. It is, it is very sizable, okay? Seven bedrooms, I'd like to see more pictures to see the build. 229 square meters, really good property. Cash basis only, you need cash. Which is a good thing, because if you got cash, cash is king. At the end of the day, what it means for those holding cash is only those people with cash that can prove they've got money in a bank. The sufficient amount of money in the bank can bid on this property. If you don't have cash, if you need financing, you're not gonna be able to bid on this property. So. Someone might get a really good deal. They might get this for four million, right? And at four million, that size, this is a good property. Really good buy. Issue again. I hate seeing these yellow tags. It's just painful. Wow, yellow tag <laughs> with special concern. Very generalized statement. They say the same thing, but look, it has some uh, more information there. Look at this. Titles under process of consolidation. What does that mean? So it sounds like maybe there's dual titles, because it is a big block. It could be two or three blocks, and they're amalgamating the blocks just to be one lot or something, maybe for property tax reasons or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm just assuming. But it says no possession with tenants or illegal settlers. So it sounds like someone's living in here and will not leave. Maybe they're the previous owners. They claim to have lost their title deed and they are squatting in the property. What do you do? Honestly, I'd love to hear from someone that has had experience buying these yellow and red tag properties. I'd love to hear from you guys if anyone has this experience, you know, especially with people illegal settlers mind you squatting in your property what do you do i mean can you call the police will the police come and remove them i don't believe so i also believe in the philippines there's certain things and rights that squatters or these people have to stay in the property and the process to remove people from a lot or a house is difficult to say the least so, you know, the legal system, the court system, going through the courts here, tough, really tough. And yeah, I mean, especially as a foreigner, if you're a foreigner buying in your wife's name uh, or a family member's name, etc., got to be super, super careful, okay? You just do not want to go to court. You want to avoid it at all costs. I have heard of stories of whereby let's say there's a lot and people have come like 50 people have come down to this lot in Manila and they've squatted there they built like illegal housing you know makeshift homes and they just won't leave so developers come along you know they own the lot they've left the lot they don't have security on the lot and these squatters have come so they said look I need you gone I'll pay everyone 
you know, who's living here, 20,000, 30,000 peso to leave. You know, you sign a document saying you leave, you leave with security, then they fence it all off, they have security to protect the property and stop them from coming back. I've heard of stories like this and I'd like to hear from individuals buying smaller houses and lots, not just, you know, stories from developers as to, you know, have they had a similar experience? You know, how did they resolve the issue? How did they resolve the problem? All right, we're getting closer to the end. Most of the properties you'll notice, I've tried to make it so they're sub 5 million peso. Towards the end, we have some wild card properties, so stay tuned. We've got these wild card properties. I also want feedback from everyone. Please do comment. Please do comment. Do you like this style of video? Do you want to see the foreclosures with commentary and try and find you know some property online? and go through that and talk about different properties. I think a lot of people have been waiting uh, to see this type of video format, so I am really excited about it. I think it's good, but only time will tell as to you know whether it's popular and people want to see this or not. Okay, another property, San Fernando. Okay, and it's on the northern side of San Fernando, closer to Angeles in Pampanga, and it's in Bernadette Heights. Okay, one picture, come on, <laughs> right, smaller lot, I don't like the lot size, for Pampanga, you can do better, okay, 120 square meters, Shh. honestly, I think the lot size is a bit small, it's small, for 5.5 million, come on, come on, mate, maybe for 3.5, 3, three? sure, no doubt okay so anyway having a look at this it's a green tag so obviously that'll boost the value you know San Fernando already um, is starting to increase a lot uh, but keep in mind you can still buy like I've seen in some sub subdivisions in San Fernando like six seven thousand peso per square meter it's about the cheapest nowadays but you know two, 200 square meter lot for you know six 6,000 peso per square meter, that's 1.2 million. Um, you know, then you stick a house on a 100 square meter house, even if it's a small house with a, a bigger lot than this, um, you're going to be spending 5 million, sure, for a 120, 140 square meter house. But you get a bigger lot. I'm not fond of the smaller lots. Honestly, building quality is not the greatest in the Philippines. Over time, you know, buildings will age. What is valuable is the land. The land goes up because this land over time, you know, it's getting more and more scarce. People are building on smaller and smaller lots. Who knows? When when my son is my age, you know, and he's in his late thirties, possibly, you know, they're building on twenty and thirty square meter lots. I, I hate to think. I hate to think, but maybe, you know, they've got some new design, I don't know, right? Where you just drive a car in and then there's a stairwell like a spiral staircase and you get what you know 20 30 square meters on every floor and you have to build five and six stories <laughs> I, I i really hope that never happens but I'm, I'm just saying i'm just saying i mean you know back in the day I'm, I'm sure there's people 30 40 years ago that would have just laughed about building on 20 square meter lots they're probably living on thousand two thousand ten thousand square meter lots and farms and, and big allotments to grow you know fruit and veg and and this sort of thing i'd love an acreage you know i'd love an acreage to go off the grid grow my own food and this sort of thing anyway i'm dreaming now we're getting towards the end before the wild card properties before the wild card properties i want to show you this one this is in okay crosswinds so look Crosswinds is an upmarket development. I had seen a property in Crosswinds before I bought in Subic, and it was about six or seven million then. It was not this big. This is big. This property is big. Okay, it's 200 square meters lot size and 171. The one I saw maybe was 110 square meters, 120 something like that, and they wanted like 6.57 million. So this is actually a decent property, right? definitely decent let's just check 
Is it? Oh, it is green. Green is good. They have everything. You're not going to end up in court. I'll tell you what is bad. Dun dun dun! Tal volcano. The volcano. It's close by. It's in Tagatai. Okay, it is a really nice area. I'll be honest. I really love this area. The worry is again volcano. I'm not going to harp on about volcano. We can go there. We can worship the volcano. 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 Whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Mate, it's late at night. I'm losing it. <laughs> right? Started work at 5.30 this morning. <laughs> what is it? Like 10 o'clock? Anyway, anyway, moving along. This is a cool property. Obviously, the volcano is an issue, but it's in an awesome subdivision. It's awesome. Go down there. Just Google Crosswinds. They, the Crosswinds development was based on, like, these Swiss... Swiss chalets, okay, like this, you know, Switzerland style um, development. So the quality was really good and it was kind of cool what they did out there. Um, and, you know, everything that's out there is, is really nice. I think they even have, what's the word for it? It's like, um, it's kind of like a lift. I forget the word for it. Gondola. Out this way, they even have like these gondolas. You ride the gondolas. The gondolas go up and you, you look over the mountains and the volcano and the lake and everything in this area. They, they have that. They've got the gondola. So pretty cool. Pretty nice area. Anyway, moving along. Another property in Subic. 814 square meters. Look, 10 million. Too much money, but it is a big property. It's got a green tag. Okay. It is a bit closer to the beach than the other properties. You'd have to negotiate really, really hard on this one. I wouldn't want to pay $10 million. Uh, It is... Look, you have to look at the property. I'd say that you wouldn't want to b pay $10 million, but you really need to look at the property because it is 10 bedrooms. The other thing that's interesting is, you know, I looked at houses. I didn't look for apartments, so I'm assuming this is one house. However... If you look at the property, it looks like multiple houses or units. Um, it's got like separate entries, like it's got one entry to the right there, one in the middle. Um, you know, it could be that, and look at the floor, yeah, it's 512 square meters. I mean, it could be five units, two bedroom units that you can all rent out and maybe, you know, it's a really good deal you know, asking price at 10 and you buy it at 8 and look, you got 5 units for one something, you know, high ones each and you can rent them out for a decent price. So this could be like a little business, right? Um, this could be a real winner. Again, very hard because I'm, I'm just going on the p one picture. I'm just imagining it could just be one house. If it's one house, it's not worth it. But y you have to wonder, why would you have one house that's 512 square meters in size? I mean, it doesn't sound right, does it? So ultimately, look, Subic Waterfront Resort is very close by. The Beloy Beach is close by. Uh, Barreto's a hop, skip, and a jump. And you also have White Rock Beach. And, you know, you've got the, the water park there. From there, you can cross to Snake Island. Um, you've got a resort there. Go drinking and relax on the beach on the island. Lots of things to do. You know, Beretta is very close by for those foreigners that like the area. Cash basis only. Cash is king, guys. In the Philippines, hard to get financing for foreclosures, this sort of thing. Most want cash, 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 because they don't want to muck around for 30, 60 plus days and then realize that you can't get finance and everything goes pear-shaped. The deal falls over. Anyway, that's it for the ones with prices. I now have some other ones that are wild cards. So let's go encore, encore. We've got the wild card properties here, okay? Now this one, Ayala Alabang, okay? Ayala Alabang, okay? If you know this area, you will know this is an awesome area. Look how close it is to the city of Alabang. It's in Ayala, Alabang. Okay, now this is a very, very exclusive area. Okay, very exclusive. There's houses in this area that are hundreds 
of millions of peso. I'm telling you, like minimum 80 to 100 million plus million peso. So you're talking minimum like 1.82 million dollar properties. They might go, yeah, really? Properties cost that much in the Philippines? Let me tell you, in private gated estates, okay, in private gated estates, yes, they do. They cost a lot of money. So this does say a Yala employee's housing phase, but it does still say a Yala Alabang village. So I, I didn't know there was an Ayala employee's housing. So this probably isn't as expensive, but it's still got the location, location, location. It is a red tag. Dun, dun, dun. Red tag with pending court cases. <laughs> it's a real roll of the dice. I do not want to go to court in the Philippines, nor do you. No one wants to go through any kind of legal proceeding in the Philippines. Being Filipino, foreigner, expat, doesn't matter. You do not want to go to court here. This is in court. This is in litigation. The big thing, and you might say, oh, isn't it easy? Don't you just hire a lawyer? Lawyers cost money. Lawyers are expensive. You know, you're talking about time. Now, court cases, I've known court cases to go for years. Now, I'm not just talking a couple of years. I'm talking there could be court cases that are ongoing for 10 plus years. So before they rule on it and say, okay, this, this is for possession of the bank and this has been bought by this person, um, you know, and this is what, what happens, right? It, it goes through court. So it looks like the bank is possibly filing in court right to take possession of the property or something okay it could be squatters you know does look like it's it's fenced up it could be squatters who knows there's some issue here you need more information and you're taking a punt so you got to get it super super cheap the price doesn't list the price I don't know very hard to say very hard to say because it's a fantastic area I'd love to live in this area moving along this is a nice property. Okay, this is one of the nicer properties that I've seen. Like, a lot of the builds, I'm not too fond of the builds. You can see this is very close um, to, like, the malls, just the CBD in Santa Rosa Laguna. Have a look at the pictures here. Again, no price here. Looks nice. Well, you got the upstairs here. Like it looks like some kind of terraced area. Is that like a tarp? Or is like, are the bricks warped or is that a tarp? That's got to be a tarp. Right, but it does look like a nice home. Looks like a nice property. Just don't know what the price is. Again, it is a red tag. Dun, dun, dun. A lot of land disputes in the Philippines. Really, really interesting. The amount of land disputes, the title problems, the dodgy titles, the property pitfalls is especially with land you know condominiums I don't often hear about issues because most condominiums and why foreigners well they can only legally buy leasehold or condominiums um, but why foreigners just like to buy condominiums is easy you just buy it you know you buy it from a developer you know you're not going to have the property pitfall but the capital growth you know and the price you're going to pay you know, capital growth is most likely going to be lower. And the price you're going to pay per square meter is going to be higher. Okay, it's definitely going to be a lot higher. So look, if you're willing to do the hard work, you know, put on your overalls and really dig deep and take a risk sometime, it might be worth buying. Moving along, now this is a great one. It's in North Fairview in Quezon City. I think this is the only property that I've listed in case on again it doesn't have a price and it is a court case it is an issue it's under litigation good property in case on city Paranyaki honestly and let me just check this one yep these last two these are awesome 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 this is Paranyaki BF homes lot area 350 square meters Floor area 317. These are really, really nice homes, but they have red tags, sadly. 
look at the location. Look at where BF Homes is, guys. BF Homes, you drive out, you're on the main road there. Boom. Asena City. Boom. Mall of Asia. Boom. The airport. Paranyaki, guys. Honestly, growth-wise, Paranyaki is like the next Makati. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Paranyaki is where it's at. I really like BF Homes. I know you're going to have to spend for it. You're going to have to spend more money. But maybe you can get a deal on one of these things and work out the court issues and it's worth buying. Here's the second one in Paranyaki. A little bit smaller lot area. But again, Paranyaki BF Homes. Love to live there. That'd be awesome. Good spot. Very close to the CBD. Again, Mall of Asia. Asena City. Everything that's going on there. Great area. Great area. Well, that's it. You saw the wild cards. Um, don't know, maybe you got a headache. Maybe you hated this series. Maybe you loved it. I'm looking for your feedback. Please let me know. Hey, Pete, I love this video. It was fantastic. I want to see more. You know, if you want to see more, say, hey, Pete, I'm looking in Cebu. Hey, Pete, I'm looking in Angeles City. You know, can you recommend some properties? Can you find some foreclosure videos? Or just generally search for properties for sale and compare properties. What do you want to see? I need feedback, guys. So thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. We're only 20 subscribers off 30,000 subs. So I need your help to reach that milestone. I need 30,000 subs. I'm hoping I go to sleep tonight. You know, I've been working past 10 o'clock. You know, I started at 5 a.m., you know, working the whole day and night. And I hope I wake up tomorrow morning and I'm celebrating, right? Because there's 30,000 subs. I'm going, yay! Awesome! <laughs> I hope so. Let me pray on that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a great night. Double thumbs up. Please do remember to subscribe and share this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks, guys, and bye for now. Bye-bye.